What's going on everybody and welcome to GNR Central and I want to talk about one of the Guns N' Roses member solo records and that was Duff McKagan's 1993 album Believe In Me and it was an album that was recorded over the span of a couple of years over the course of the User Illusion tour. Now the album was released on September 28th 1993 almost two months before the Guns N' Roses released their Spaghetti Incident album and at its peak the album reached 137th on the Billboard 200s list and was believed to have sold about 100,000 copies worldwide, so it wasn't really a huge seller. But it did feature a lot of notable guests, such as Duff's former Guns N' Roses bandmates at that time, Slash, Matt Sorum, Dizzy Reed, and Gilby Clark. It also featured Skid Row members Sebastian Bach, Rob Afuso, and Dave Sabo, in addition to Lenny Kravitz and Jeff Beck. Now, the song You Can't Put Your Arms Around a Memory from the Guns N' Roses album The Spaghetti Incident was also recorded during sessions for the album, but then it was included on the Spaghetti Incident instead of Believe in Me. Now, there was only one music video shot for the record, and that was Believe in Me, which was the title track, and it received pretty minimal airplay on MTV, and it's mostly compiled of low-quality videos of Duff McKagan during his touring time and his recording time for the song. Now, one thing a lot of fans may not know is that if you guys got any of the bonus tracks, or if you got the Believe In Me single, a B-side to the single was a cover of the Prince song, Bambi. Now, Prince was notorious for not liking artists basically covering his song, because he believed that once somebody covered it, it the original song kind of lost its value. So here's an interview that Duff gave to a Canadian uh, TV station. It was much music back in the day, and they were kind of like our ripoff of MTV. Um, and now, you know, we have MTV Canada because we've evolved a bit. So this is an interview he gave in September of 93 where he talked about his solo record and why he pursued this project. I wouldn't suggest it. Wow, that's, that must have been kind of hard. How did you do that? I mean, it was, just... more, it was a therapy. I kept my feet on the ground. You know, we're playing to people, 50,000 to 140,000 people a night. And that gets very surrealistic and weird, you know. So I take solace in the studio and just turn off all the lights and light candles and there I was. Um. Now, of course, Duff had some really great and well-known musicians play on his record. And in the same interview, he told a story of how he got guitar legend Jeff Beck to actually play on the album. In fact, it wasn't him who approached Jeff Beck. It was Jeff Beck who actually wanted to play on the record. And here's a story that Duff had to tell. Now, you have some really amazing people working with you on the album. I mean, that, that is one of the, uh, let's say, uh, positive sides of being famous is that you get to meet all these creative people and then, of course, you know, you sort of connect on a musical level. Like, uh, people like Jeff Beck, Lenny Kravitz, mm. uh, Skid Row, your other GNR uh, bandmates, and who else played on the album? That's about it. <laughs> That's it? Um, uh, it, it, it there was started... There else, I can't really remember that I thought I read. Now, I mean, here's, you here's wrote everything and you yeah. played most of the instruments in it as well. Here's how it started, yeah. I, I played the drum tracks and bass tracks and, and guitar tracks and, and sang, like Jeff Beck. He heard me play at my hotel room um, and I had all the basics and, and he, you know, he had this knock on the door and he comes in. He goes, what's this? And I told him what I was doing. He goes, man, can I play on it? And I'm like, uh, when? <laughs> you don't say no to Jeff Beck, you know? And Lenny's just a good friend of mine, and he used to come up to my house, and he really liked this, this song, The Majority, and I, and I got done recording it in the studio. I was at A&M, still in L.A., and I called him. I said, dude, I recorded it at a real studio. You want to sing it? He was there in five minutes, sang it, and that was that. Okay, well, listen. Now, one question you guys may have is, did... Duff's solo project caused any tension with the members of Guns N' Roses who maybe thought, hey, Duff should be saving these songs for the next Guns record. But you guys have to look at what happened. You know, even though Gilby's solo record was in production for a long time, Duff was working on his record for about two years or two and a half years. He did an interview back in 1991 when he was promoting the Illusions records. He already had the song Believe in Me written, and it was in a rough form at that time. And he talked about working with uh, Dave Sabo from... Uh, Skid Row at the time, and they, he'd already written a lot of the album already. And then Gilby was doing his own solo, his own solo record of Pawn Shop Guitars, which Axe sang on. And then of course Slash would soon follow later on with Slash a Snake Pit with the It's Five O'clock Somewhere album. And even though it wasn't originally planned as as late as late as 1994 for Slash to do a side project, he had no choice because him and Axel weren't really seeing eye to eye, and it was a way for him to release the music he had written that Axel had basically rejected. So here's what Duff had to say when he was asked about whether this album was going to cause any tension with the guys from Guns N' Roses, and how he said these guys were actually really supportive of his solo efforts. 
of GNR and also if GNR or you by yourself are going to be doing any concerts in Western Canada. Think it's going to be any conflict with the band? Well, no, no. I mean, the guys in the band no, oh, yeah, play it. Yeah, they'd come down and check it out. And, wow, can I play in this? And and you know, I talked to Axel last night. You know, I thought, and they're the biggest fans of the record. They're all gonna fly out and join me on tour. Can I come out and hang with you? You know, and they respect what what I did and, and the reasons why I did this. And and it's, you know, GNR is my band. You know, this is something I had to do. And it's nothing like oh you know, uh, see what I can do. It's nothing like that. Right. You know. Okay. Well, you go now, Duff's always been considered the more, most punkiest member of Guns N' Roses. Um, the other members have their own influences, but Duff was definitely the punk rock guy. He played in a lot of punk rock bands growing up in Seattle, and he brought that sound to the band. And a lot of people may listen to this record and expect a punk rock record, but they're going to be pretty surprised by what they hear on the record. There's a, there's a song that has string arrangements. There's even a rap song on there. And here's what Duff had to say about not giving the fans what they would expect in just a simple punk record. I went through and, and I'm a very happy person now and, and this is what kind of helped me get to where I'm at. So you've always sort of been considered the punkier member of Guns N' Roses and um, a, a lot of people were expecting this to be a real sort of punk album but it, I mean although I think at some points it sounds a little bit like Lords of the New Church like this reminiscent of that feel but you even have uh, a string orchestra playing on a song yeah. and you've got like something that's a little bluesier and um, something that's just straight rock now okay well to answer the first question people expect to be a punk rock record because what i paid i played in punk rock bands do you want me to go back regress or do you want me to take what i learned and, and apply it to here right. and the album is a roller coaster of, of different sounds well emotions don't, aren't always the same you know and, and this the album completely reflects and sometimes you feel like a string orchestra up here, you know? Sometimes you feel like, you know, a sledgehammer up here, and that's, that's all it is. Okay, we'll talk more about how uh, you got all those sounds on the album, but now we're going to see a video you really wanted to check out, which was White Zombie. Yeah. Send a Kid 65. Okay. Kid seems to be a favorite here on the show with all the musicians we have on. We'll be right back with Daphne McKagan on the Power 30. So shortly after Guns N' Roses concluded their two and a half year long Use Your Illusion tour, Duff wasn't going to sit still. He had his upcoming album Believe In Me coming out that fall, and he pretty much went out on the road right after that. And he got a phone call from Axel, and Axel called me and said, basically I was crazy for going back out. And he told Axel, it's what I do, man. And besides, I wasn't going to sit still, thought Duff. Keep moving, keep moving. And it was around that time that he stopped using cocaine. He said for the most part, that had stuck so far. It would be easier to stick with it on the road. I just had too many drug connections in LA, and my life there was intertwined with coke. Keep moving, Duff thought. Now, the tour started with three showcase appearances in clubs in LA, San Francisco, and New York, and it started pretty badly. I had switched from vodka to wine, but immediately found myself drinking about a case a day, wine, 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 and blood. Blood in San Francisco and my wife Linda got into a scrap backstage and traded punches with another woman until teeth started rattling to the floor. Blood in New York as fistfights broke out in the audience. Then we flew to Europe to join the Scorpions tour. And then a, a fistfight broke out between a couple of Duff's band members in an airport. Blood. Our lead guitar player pulled a knife on the bus driver in England. Talk of more blood, 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 and wine. I often had to travel alone to get to the next town early to do some publicity. I showed up at a record signing in Sweden, swilling, basically swilling wine from the bottle. Got skewered in the local press for that. A lot of young kids in line for autographs. We played some inspired shows, but there were also times when I just shouldn't have been up there playing. Times when I let myself go too far and my performance suffered. There, was, there I was in huge venues playing with my own band under my own name and not bringing my A-game. What's your excuse now, Duff thought. And at the end of that leg, I needed another guitar player. I couldn't keep the guy who stabbed our driver. I called Paul Soldier, my old bandmate from 10 Minute Warning back in Seattle. I hadn't spoken to him in 10 years. He was sober. Want to tour with my band? He said, yeah. So on with Japan, we went to. Bottles and bottles of wine each day. My innards burned. Tums, I need Tums, Duff thought. Sloppy on stage again. What the F are you doing? Duff finally got back home to LAX, limping along, and it was he was on a long commercial flight. Oh, F, he thought. We had a break before basically heading back 
um, across the Pacific to tour Australia. And Duff thought to himself, I just can't do it anymore. I felt sick, really sick, the worst flu I had ever had. Are you going to be that guy, a quitter, Duff thought. He basically picked up his phone and dialed his tour manager and said, I can't do it anymore. And then Duff thought to himself, I was that guy. He th- but then he thought, no tour, it's fine, but I needed to keep moving. So Duff had just recently bought a house in Seattle. So on March 31st, 1994, he headed back to Seattle on a plane from LAX, and he just happened to share a flight with Kurt Cobain. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of Believe in Me. And I saw a poll the other day about which solo record, even though I wouldn't call it It's 5 O'Clock Summer a solo record, um, which album do you guys like better? Did you guys like It's 5 O'Clock Summer better or Believe in Me? It seemed like a majority of people like Slash a Snake Pit better. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. Take care.